So in this video, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the fundamental differences between objects and the bed. I'm sure a lot of people watching this video have heard a lot of different content creators talking about routing to the bed versus routing to objects. I want to take a look at what this actually means. And the way that we're going to do this is by exporting a ADM master file and then importing it back into Studio One, which is really easy to do so that we can take a look at the actual tracks and what gets produced when we export that master file. So if we take a look at our console here, notice that we have surround panners on some of these channels. And then on other channels, we have a spatial object panner. The basic way to explain this is that anything that's routed to the bed, such as this track over here, notice that it's using a surround panner. Now, if I move temporarily to the guitars, notice that these are using an object-based panner. Now, if we open up the Dolby Atmos renderer, we'll notice that when we are soloing out a track that's routed directly to the object-based panner, we'll just open up the inspector here for a moment, also something like the piano over here, that this just gets routed directly to the Dolby Atmos renderer's output. But if we were to hop in over here, notice that this goes to the bed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's go to song and let's export spatial audio. We'll go beds versus object as a name between the loop and let's export this file. So I'm about 80% done with my 7.1.4 system. I have the 7.1 part fully set up. It's calibrated. I'm running the new Personas Iris Pros and a Personas Sub 10 for my LFE. Still waiting on my height or ceiling speakers to arrive and still waiting on some mounting solutions for those. But basically, I've started doing some pre-mixing in 7.1, just getting a feel for the system, developing an understanding of how the rear surrounds sound to me in an immersive mixing context versus the side surrounds and how I feel about the center channel and how the LFE interacts with everything. Now, before I put together this system, I could, in theory, understand things in terms of like opening up an object-based panner versus a surround panner and taking a listen to things in the binaural rendering, which is a really great way to be able to get a feel for working with Dolby Atmos and Immersive is just by listening to the binaural output. But it wasn't until I started panning things around, even in the 7.1 system, in the object-based panner versus the surround panner, that I started to kind of get a feel for how they're different. So what we're going to do now with this Dolby Atmos ADM master file that we've exported is I'm just going to drag and drop this anywhere on the GUI. Open ADM broadcast wave file master. We'll let this open up. This is going to create a brand new Studio One song. And as you can see, it has imported some audio files. Now, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to open up my console and I just need to fix something quickly. I have a default IO setup that I have that goes with every new song that I add. I'm going to import something right over here. Let's just import this basic configuration to start off with. We will click apply and we'll give us a moment. And now if I head to my outputs and also let's just delete this because we don't want to have this doubled up and we will click apply and we will click OK. And now under the outputs, let's assign our headphones to the main outs. Now my bed format is 7.1.2. And I'll leave the speaker format exactly in 7.1, but it's worth noting that what I'm actually recording for this video is the binaural rendering of this immersive mix. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is let's close our console for a moment. Let's take a look at the files that were added over here. If we go into our finder just for a moment and let's open up the inspector for this, notice that this says 18 audio channels, 18. That's very different than having two channels on a left and right. Let's break out this 18 channels and explain where these are coming from. Well, we can see right over here that we have these individual tracks. And notice this says lead vox left, lead vox right, BG vox left, right. Keep in mind that my original session where I mixed this from, I was mixing from stereo stems. So they were a left and right pair. But on those stereo stems that were objects where we use the object based panner, they were part of a stereo file, but we were using object-based panning. So what happens is these end up getting separated. So for these, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have 10 more channels to make up that 18. This is where the bed comes in. So if we zoom in on this for a moment and let's do a data zoom, we have 10 channels. We have our left and right, we have our center, we have our LFE, and then we have our surrounds, and we have our rear surrounds, side surrounds, and then we have our two height channels. 
So this is something that gets actually rendered into the bed. If we were to solo out this bed and have a listen to it, anything that I had routed from the surround panel to my main outs in my previous song, this gets rendered into one multi-channel file. If we open up the main outs for a moment and let's add a level meter, and we need to make sure that this will be in peak and RMS mode. If we take a look at this, notice that the bed track, we have our left and right, we didn't have a center, a little bit of LFE, left surround, right surround, left rear surround, right rear surround, left top mid and right top mid, right? All of these files are rendered and committed to these channels. The interesting thing though about anything that was routed as an object-based panning, let me hop back over to the other song just temporarily, anything that was uh, routed with object panning, so for example, our lead vocals, our background vocals, our guitars, and our pianos, these were stereo tracks. These were a stereo pair of tracks, and then we had very specific panning information, like for example, the guitars over here, you can see that they're panned off a little bit to the left. They're kind of happening here, and then our piano is off here. So we have something like this that's kind of happening here. But keep in mind, these are two channels. We think of it as a left and right stereo pair because that's what we're kind of hardwired to think. But if we take a look at what gets rendered for the ADM master file, if we go back into this session, let me lower my data zoom for a moment. Here are the guitars. These ones right over here. Let me switch to this color blue over here. And then for our piano, we'll switch to something like this. So now if we take a listen to these, it sounds the exact same as it did in the other session but we actually have two separate tracks. And if I listen to these two, the piano, okay, let's open up the console for a moment. These don't have a left and right stereo painter on these files because they're, they're going out to a Dolby Atmos 7.1 system. But what they do have is if we were to enable the automation, so we go over here, notice that we have volume automation, that's a given, but if we go to add or remove, and we open up the panner, take a look at all the different panning that we can have. So now let's expand this envelope over here for the piano, the left one. I'm just going to expand all the envelopes. This has panning metadata that's been rendered into this file. You can see the panning X, the panning Y. We don't have anything for pan Z or size, but our spread is at 90. So every single one of these files has metadata that's been embedded into it. And if we play all of these together, it's essentially going to sound exactly the same as it did before. One thing that I do need to make sure that I'm doing though is all my main outs and we're listening to binaural. Yep. So if we play this, this is now a file that has a bed track that is embedded audio, that is very specific channel information. We know it's 10 channels in total because it's a 7.1.2 file. There's the seven, which represents your left center surround, left surround, right surround, left rear surround, and right surround. The point one is the LFE channel. The point two are the height channels. So if we add seven plus one, that's eight, plus the two height channels, that makes 10. So we have a 10 channel audio file that's embedded, which is our bed, and then the objects, these get rendered as monofiles in this case. They have metadata that represents any panning information. And then you can see that in terms of the panner, well, these are routed to the object panner versus the surround panner. And if we play these, we're not gonna see anything at all in the bed. If I open up the Dolby Atmos renderer and I press play, we're not gonna see anything here, nothing. But we do see the output because anything that's an object panner gets routed directly to the Dolby Atmos renderer's output. Now, if conversely, we solo out the bed channel over here, we are gonna see everything show up in the bed. And it also shows up in the output because it gets routed to the output. And then of course, like I mentioned, if you wanna see anything specific to the bed, this is exactly what we have coming from the bed channel. And this is embedded information, okay? So I guess, I suppose I wanted to show it this way versus offering um, an analogy in the stereo world first. I wanted to show it this way because this is the proper way to think about it. Your bed track or your bed 
gets rendered into a 7.1.2 file as of the time that I'm doing this video, which is 10 channels of audio, regardless of whether you use them or not, regardless of whether you use the LFE or the center, it's still a 10 channel file. It just might be completely blank. But then anything that's routed uh, as objects, they get just exported according to the gain staging and any plugins that you had in terms of processing. They get exported as files and then they have metadata in terms of where they're supposed to go. Keep in mind, for objects, we're looking at X, Y, Z coordinates. We can pan around in a three-dimensional space. The panning for the bed track, that's a little bit more constrained to how you would pan in a typical surround setup, which could be like, you know, left and right and center. There is some things that we can do in terms of like divergence or spreading things out or, you know, pulling things in and smearing them across different speakers. But it's definitely a different vibe and it's definitely a different feel. One thing that I've noticed though from just working a little bit in, in Dolby Atmos and working with object-based panner versus what I'm used to, it's been a while, but what I'm used to is a surround panner, is it's definitely, there's a lot more flexibility with an object-based panner. In terms of playback systems and Dolby Atmos in general, it is designed to be able to fold down from anything from like, you know, the full extent that we can work here in terms of a speaker setup. I could, if I had the speakers, I could work in 9.16. But that is meant to be able to be played back on really anything all the way down to a set of headphones or stereo or 5.1 or 5.2 or 5.1.4. Whatever system, whatever playback system that you have running, it is meant to basically decode this mix, this master file, and play it back the, with the best possible quality according to all of the tracks that you're feeding it, which in this case, we have the bed, and then we have objects. I think there's a lot more flexibility with objects. My first thought was that I thought I'd be relying on the bed a lot more, but as I kind of move towards this, I'm really interested in getting my height speakers going so I can really kind of let's just say experiment and see how things sound with object panning and automation and everything like that versus the bed track. Anyways, hopefully that answers some people's questions. Beds versus object. What's the difference and how is it useful? Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.